。其實 ESF 嗰條 Q 咧排個 waiting list 咧係好長嘅，呢個眾所周知㗎啦。Hong Kong Island in primary school. Each school per year, one to six, only has seven places opening a year. He said some students are applying to many foreign schools. That means our actual needs are how many. It has a connection to the team. Expanding the international capacity will deal with a portion of the problem. It will never solve the problem until you have all of the schools in Hong Kong being run on the fine standard. Or they said, we have a huge waiting list and there's no way that you can get in. There are 47 international schools in Hong Kong offering middle and primary school education to 37,000 children. But supply is falling increasingly short of demand. Not only is this causing concern in the expatriate community, but it's also making it hard for international corporations to hire professionals from overseas with children who need to go to school. When there is no rice, we would cut it rice and water. Mm. And then we planted the rice mm. with our friends. I think I must have contacted over 30, 40 schools on various lists, DSS schools and designated public schools and this, that, and other. And these are all schools in some shape or form receive public funding and um, have been vetted by the EDB. And I found some schools were shocked that the EDB had even sent me over to them because they're like, we can't deal with an international family. We don't have any system in place to support your child. <sighs> and I can read the whole book. <laughs> Jessica Kuwata, an American, is married to a Japanese. When she came here to teach English one and a half years ago, her only son, Kai, was four and a half years old, the right age for kindergarten too. Jessica's wish was to have him go to a local school where he could learn Chinese. But none of the schools they went to would admit the boy because he could not speak Cantonese. Disappointed, Jessica turned to international schools, only to be flabbergasted. And all of those schools were like, sorry, we're, we're full to capacity plus a wait list, we'll be happy to put you on the wait list, but it might be a couple of years. But in Hong Kong, schools can reject you, because in America and in Japan, schools cannot reject a child. So if the child's in the district and you're there and you have the application form in your hand, the school must take you. And in Hong Kong, we've been told no by every school I've contacted, and it's been a big surprise to me that schools in Hong Kong can say no. He's still being homeschooled. Kai is being homeschooled by his father, who's also a teacher by profession. But he's six years old now, and by Hong Kong law, he must go to school. Well, all the international schools are full. Like, we're talking two, three-year wait lists. There was one, a local school, but they toot themselves as an international school, and, and they're just right behind us. They're quite convenient, actually. And all the teachers speak English, and all the children speak English. And there was like 200 parents fighting for those five slots, and we got rejected. 
for her family to remain in Hong Kong, Jessica is hoping that Kai will gain admission to a local school through the central allocation system or get a place in the Japanese international school. Otherwise, her husband will have to bring Kai back to Japan in a few months and she'll follow suit when her current teaching contract expires. We're going on a bear hunt, we're going to catch a big one. What a beautiful day! We're not scared. Uh-oh, a forest. A big Amanda house. Chapman is an English teacher from England. Her daughter, Kaya, born in Hong Kong, will be finishing international kindergarten in the summer. Amanda recently took Kaya to an international school operated under the auspices of the ESF. She was confident that admission would not be a problem. To her astonishment, Kaya was not even given an interview. She's what they call a category one. Native English speaker, no Cantonese at all, anywhere in the family, international school, fluent in English. So I was absolutely astonished when I got an email from them to tell me that she wasn't getting an interview. I couldn't believe it when her classmates in K2 with her, who are, have two Chinese parents, they were given interviews, but she wasn't. There's never been a shortage of expatriates in Hong Kong. They come from many different countries. For this reason, the ESF says, the main criterion for admission is a child's ability to communicate in English, not nationality. Title 英基里只是六七年就成立,那时候主要香港是殖民地,有很多政府的官员是英国来做事,主要去serve那班的小朋友,这是二十几二十年已经转了,变成一间七成是他们的家长是揸永久居民,七成很大部分不是全部很大部分
and more and more local parents are opting out of the system and moving into ESF schools and international schools. And this is why foreigners are being squeezed out. The government has even said to me they cannot help us find DSS places. That is nothing to do with them. They can't control the DSS schools. Amanda is now the chair of the Native English Speaking Teachers Association. But even she is desperately looking for a school place for her own daughter. This is ironical, she says. And the shortage of international school places has already had an impact on recruiting teachers from overseas. But the EDB did tell us in a liaison meeting that we had in October, I think, um, that they were finding it difficult to recruit from overseas. And so what they're doing is they're recruiting locally. But the, the government just said, well, if the, if the school won't take you, there's nothing, you know, we, we can't help you with that. Okay, Justin, are you ready? Madam Chair, ladies and gentlemen, is it justifiable to claim Hong Kong isn't caring of its ethnic minorities? When Over the years, they now do the research themselves. The questions have ignited in their mind. They don't need a teacher to tell them what the question is. They've got it in their mind. They just need the teacher as a reference point. Barry Bayer, a New Zealander, was one of the first English language teachers recruited by the Education Bureau from overseas in 1998. Competition was keen, he recalls, with 1,000 aspirants vying for just 100 appointments. The NET program was set up was so that uh, local colleagues and ourselves would interact and work quite a lot. We really work a lot together, we do a lot of planning together, and we're trying to maximise the results together. If you use mobile phone on the roads, it may cause some accidents. Barry says he's seen significant progress made in education in Hong Kong. More attention is given to activity-based teaching. But he's also observed that most, if not all, local schools are as exam-oriented as ever which is why many local parents are opting to send their children to international schools to avoid the relentless pressure. Coming to Hong Kong more than 10 years ago, Perry himself settled down quickly and happily. For one thing, he didn't have any problems sending his son to school. But today, he says, quality teachers with small children would have to think twice before coming. So what has been done about the shortage of school places? As we've mentioned, ESF schools are subsidized which means 20% of a student's annual school fee comes from the government. In 2000, the ESF was allotted land and funding to build a new private independent school on the condition that two-thirds of the intake of students must be local children. Category 1 would be for children who speak mainly English at home. Um, category two is for children who have some Cantonese and could cope in the local system. But to be honest, those distinctions are quite difficult to uh, maintain. It's impossible for us to verify what the parents say on the form. So it is a system that we're hoping to move away from in the next probably two or three years and put all the emphasis on the child's level of English and uh, their ability to take advantage of our curriculum, which I think is the right way to look at it. There's no real caps on the number of um, local children who can attend such schools, as opposed to elsewhere in Asia. So if you look at schools elsewhere, um, for example, in places like Bangkok, in Tokyo, in, in Singapore, in Shanghai, there are actually caps on the percentage or the proportion of schools that Oh, sorry, of places that can be offered 
um, to local or children of local families. The shortage of school places already has an impact on the economy, as Li Kuan, a human resources consultant, points out. As Asia gains economic strength, international corporations are setting up headquarters in Hong Kong, but it's getting more difficult for them to hire professionals from overseas. The reason? No guarantee their children can go to school. We have definitely heard of cases where um, expatriates or staff have decided not to accept an assignment to Hong Kong because of the challenges um, that they have in, in terms of finding a place for their child. The lack of school places has been one of the key factors discouraging international executives from bringing their families to Hong Kong. 68% of AmCham members report this affecting their business. Increasing numbers are relocating senior positions and their teams to markets like Singapore, Shanghai, <coughs> and Bangkok. Five years ago, complaints were lodged by certain foreign business bodies about the shortage of places in international schools. Recently, they were raised again, this time in the Legislative Council. The government was taken to task for subsidizing international schools and not minding their recruitment policies, creating a situation where foreign children who really need to be admitted are often rejected. Even within local people, there is another problem, the children of minority groups. An expert in dealing with it is Fermi Wong, the executive director of Hong Kong Unison. Regarding the increasing demand for international school places, Ms. Wong has a rather unique opinion. Many local parents, she says, are getting frustrated by the seemingly endless changes in the local school system. Ms. Wong also reaffirms the point made earlier by Jessica Kawata. Many non-local parents would like their children to go to local schools if only proficiency in Chinese were not a prerequisite. Yes, so Zana, what would that be? G and G is helping hand. Very good. Okay, the last one. Julie Richard, a Canadian who has acquired permanent resident status in Hong Kong, is teaching in a school for children of minority groups. She gave birth to a daughter just last year, but is already worried about the baby's future schooling. I want my daughter to go to you know, a Chinese school, and I think it's very important for her to learn Cantonese, but my husband and I, we can't really help her with her homework. Hi. 
Yeah, and I feel it's very ironic because, you know, we help, I'm trying to help a lot of students, local students and non-Chinese students, find a school and then I'll be faced with that same situation. 香港的直資或者一些主流的制度,其實都是一模一樣的要求那個中文文。那他們都想入,但是學校不收他。While Julie has a few years to cope with her problems, the latest on Amanda and Jessica. To Amanda's great relief, Kaya, her daughter, has finally found herself a place in an international school. Jessica is not so lucky. Her son Kai is still waiting, and time is running out. <laughs> 